We're finally there, ladies and gentlemen. Using the heater. You sure you want to do this? My uncle just down the road, he's poured a lot of concrete. He's got wood forms, which I believe are just two by sixes that he's kept all these years and used for various projects. He's also got stakes. I got some screws yesterday so we can screw the forms into the stakes. And then we got some cleanup, get things almost level, put the forms in, run some more gravel in there. I'll probably have to preheat it a couple times. Doesn't like the cold weather. So a couple months ago, we started in on this a little bit. There was some fence here. We took that down to clean this out a little bit. Basically get down six inches right here. That's probably about eight. Get everywhere down about six inches and then layer forms. Lay gravel back in until it's about three and a half inches deep and get that poured. When you're doing concrete and you're high iron it done, about half the cost is the actual concrete and half the cost is labor. So we got harvest done a little bit early, so we're going to spend the time, save the money, do it ourselves. Now it's not going to turn out as good as it would, and I'm certainly not saying those guys pouring concrete don't deserve every penny because it's hard work, but we're going to save some good cash. Make it a nice area for these cows to be during the day when they're about to calve. We've had a bale feeder on here. It worked out great, but then, of course, it gets real soupy on the stuff that there isn't concrete. So we're going to pour the rest of this. We're going to get cleaning. We're going to try to get this pretty much knocked out by the end of today. It'd be real nice to just drive along there and scoop that up, but my bucket and skid loader are too wide, so I'm gonna have to come in through here, and poke down and clean it out. by no means gonna look professional, but we're gonna save a lot of money. That was the hard part, right? No? Dang it. So for that frame, we got a six inch board, and then this is what we call a screed. A screed? Yep. A screed. So the screed is a two by four, which is actually three and a half inches. And so you lay some gravel in there, and you run that through. You see it got kind of a lid on it. Run that through and pull the extra gravel out, and it sucks. So our gravel goes to here, and this is the width of our kind thickness of our concrete the three and a half inches some people would say that's not thick enough but we're not driving on this it's just for cattle it'll be fine we've got lots of it that way you know, it looks like somebody dug too deep that's okay we'll get some nice fill in there good thing we got that there pile of gravel there
Nothing? Well, about two weekends ago, some people pulled in. We were talking to them, and a bee flew up my shirt and stung me. Look at all of them. Eating on that sweet corn. Corn nectar. Nectar of the gods. We're looking for a nice 2 by 4 that's about 6 foot long. So we can screed that other one without doing all crossways. That's not how you're supposed to do it, but that's what we had. Can't find one. We're going to head to Jeff's, find a piece of 2 by 4 cut it to the length, and also run a store and grab some lunch. Up and through here is ready to go. We've got a little bit of rebar that we stole from the neighbor, Jeff. Actually, we got a little left from a project that we did a couple years ago. And so there's like six or seven bars of rebar over at Jeff's place. Dad's grabbing those. And we're gonna use those in the big part. And right here, we're gonna use hog stockade panels. They'll fit nice right in there. The only thing that'll ever be on this concrete will be the skid loader, nothing too heavy. And the cattle, of course. Woo! That dust is unpleasant. About the only thing we're gonna pay for is the concrete. No rebar, concrete, and chiropractor. Yeah. Hey, but that's a write off, right? No. Oh, okay. This is what we're working with once again. I know it's not professional. We're working, we're using what we got, and we're getting by cheap. It's real windy. Old hog stockade panel there, 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 and then we got about six rebar that we found left over from a project over at Jeff's place. You know, we won't have tractors driving on it, just cattle and a skid loader. My dad said a couple times, his dad, whenever he poured concrete, they either never used rebar, and it's still looking all right over there, or sometimes they threw some old T-posts in it. When it comes to pouring concrete you got to tell them how much you want and the measurements usually in yards and it's cubic yards it's going to take about 6.7 cubic yards to fill this area we asked for eight i believe just to make sure that we don't run run out because then uh you're kind of screwed we just couldn't live with it huh no somewhat presentable he uh, called a neighbor and asked if they had any and they had just a couple sticks or? Oh, I don't know. All right. I asked if I had, he had about three sticks and he said yeah. So the truck's coming at 8.30 tomorrow morning. We'll pour it. And then uh, hopefully the 25 raccoons that live in this building don't climb all over it before that gets solid. When it comes to leveling the concrete, what you use for that is also called a screed. But they vibrate and they do a real good job of leveling that concrete out. And we don't have one. And luckily my buddy Joe from Big Johnson Farms, they did a big concrete project this year and they bought their own screed. And so, 
he's gonna show me how to run that and we're gonna bring that home so we can use that tomorrow. Water it and it will grow. Jeff has about 20 calves that, I wonder who put that there, raccoon? Is there a raccoon up in there? Hey, anybody on? So we're going to chase 20 of his up, work them real quick, just give them two shots. These freshly weaned calves, they're needing a couple bales. <laughs> Jeff used the good lube. Hemogesic. What? Hemogesic. I don't know what that means. Got about forty percent of the way there. I hear you're hungry. Hey, feller. Oh, 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 oh. There, there you go. You're doing a good job. These are some of the tamest freshly weaned calves we've had. Just working on them every year with those pellets, feeding their moms in front of them. Their mom's getting close because they want the perlets and the mom's just being more tame and not running the other way every time we come into the pasture. It teaches these guys they don't need to run the other way when we come to the pasture. So we're taming the herd a little more and more every year. They've been weaned for about five days now. Moon and Bell are in a lot less already. And so coming up in the next week, two weeks, we're gonna have to watch them really close because that's when they start getting sick. Uh, you know, all the stress they've been through. And so we just gotta watch them close and see what needs medicine. Tomorrow, 8.30 a.m., cement truck coming. We'll pour that, that'll be fun. Be a good old time. And we got some more cow stuff to do. So I hope you enjoyed today's video and hope you join us next video when we're pouring some concrete. We'll see you next time. Have a good one. Oh. Don't you love it? You walk into the shop, a 30 rack of bush just shows up out of nowhere.